Hey guys, Ernest Langdon from Langdon Tactical here. And on this video, we want to teach you how to install the trigger job in a bag in a 92 series pistol. Now, we're going to start with a Wilson Combat Brigadier Tactical. And this is almost best case scenario for a stock gun because these guns already come with the D-model hammer spring in them and the Elite 2 hammer typically running with about an eight pound double action trigger pull and about a four and a half pound single action. So a pretty solid gun from a stock standpoint, very, very shootable. We're gonna put a trigger job in a bag in it and see what that'll do for you. Now, you've got your kit already, which should include the hammer, the sear, the trigger bar, the hammer strut, and the hammer spring, the trigger return spring, as well as the sear spring. So make sure you got all those. The two things that you're probably gonna need is some sort of screwdriver to take your grips off with you, and about a two millimeter punch, and if you have it, a very small crochet hook, but we can get around without that crochet hook if you don't have one. So let's get started, get you guys squared away in that kit installed. Okay, so before we get started, the first thing we're gonna do is A, make sure that the gun is unloaded, field strip it and take the grip panels off. All right, that information is uh, easily available and you should be able to do that without my assistance. First thing we're gonna do is completely disassemble the frame uh, so that we can replace all the fire control components with the ones in the trigger job in a bag. Step one we're gonna have is to remove this trigger bar spring that's just below the trigger bar. Easiest way to do that is to reach in with a fingernail, lift that spring up, pry it and pop it out, okay? Now, once you've got that out of the gun, uh, we're gonna need to remove the trigger bar. Now, newer Berettas uh, have a captured trigger bar because there's a notch uh, that holds it in place. So we can use that punch or that crochet hook and you're gonna lift and pull that spring forward and then the trigger bar will just slide out to the side. All right, set that aside. Now we're gonna go ahead and remove the trigger from the gun. Uh, some of you are gonna be replacing your polymer trigger with the steel trigger. Uh, you also have a trigger return spring in your bag that also needs to go in as well. So uh, in order to take it out, if you look, we have a small uh, spring that comes down and captures the trigger pin in place. In order to remove that spring, we're gonna remove the slide stop lever. To do that, we're gonna lift the lever up and we're going to wiggle it and pull it out in that up position. All right, once we get to this point, you can see that it just unwinds and unhooks. You'll see this uh, right angle that goes down into that hole and holds it in place. Now, to remove the trigger from the gun, what we're gonna wanna do is push that trigger pin out from the left, I'm sorry, the right side of the gun to the left side of the gun. But before we do that, we're gonna turn the gun upside down because sometimes there's a little tension left on that spring and that'll keep that spring from going and flying across the room, right? Trigger pin, trigger return spring, and now the trigger just lifts up out through the top of the frame. Now, we're gonna get the rest of the fire control components out. Uh, first thing we wanna do here is take the tension off of the hammer strut. We have the lanyard loop and or the uh, hammer spring cap um, right here, and then this is the pin that holds that in place. In order to remove that pin, we're gonna push a little bit of pressure down on our table onto this lanyard loop cap, and then push that pin out. It should slide out fairly easily uh, on US made guns. If you have an Italian gun, it could have a roll pin in there and then in that case you're going to have to use a block and a punch to kind of tap that roll pin out of the gun. At this point we can go ahead and remove the hammer. All we'll do is grab the hammer pin here again using your fingernail or something. Just pull it out of the gun and then the hammer comes out through the top of the gun here. Once you've done that, if you turn the gun upside down uh, hammer strut falls right out of the gun. If it doesn't fall out, just tap the frame a little bit, it'll fall out of the gun. Last thing we need to take out of the gun until we have it dis disassembled as far as we need is the sear and sear spring and sear pin. Take your little two millimeter punch, place it uh, on the sear pin right here, 
and push it all the way through. All right, so your pin falls out. And then again, turn the frame this way so that when you pull that out, if there's any tension on that spring, it goes down and doesn't go flying up into the air. All right, there we have our sear and our sear spring. And now the gun is completely disassembled. I recommend that you take the time right now to go ahead and clean the gun up. If it's not a new gun, uh, get that all the extra dirt and grime out of there, and then we'll be ready to reassemble. Okay, so we have all the parts laid out to go back in the gun. Uh, I've replaced all of the original parts with the trigger job and the bag parts. So we have our trigger, our trigger pin, trigger return spring, and the slide stop, which is going to be the first thing that we'll put in the gun. Then we've got the sear, sear pin, and sear spring. We'll put that in next, followed by the hammer strut, the hammer, the hammer pin, and then finally we'll put in the trigger bar, uh, trigger spring, hammer spring, and lanyard loop and pin. Okay, so that's the sequence we're going to go in. Okay, first thing, let's get the trigger back in the gun. Uh, go ahead, drop the trigger down through the top of the frame. Uh, you're probably going to have to kind of reach around and hold uh, that trigger in place. And then you can go ahead and drop the trigger spring down inside the gun. Use your punch to get it aligned uh, down inside uh, so that it lines up. Now what we're going to do is we're going to use that two millimeter punch to come in from the right side of the gun to the left side of the gun. And we're going to go through and loop everything in Basically, this punch is going to act as a slave pin uh, to hold everything in place so that I can come back through and with the trigger pin and push it through. Now, we want to keep tension on the punch as we push it through and then just take that punch and kind of move it around in a circle until we get the pin through. Okay. Once we have the trigger in there, the trigger pin in there, let's go ahead and put our slide stop back in the gun. We're going to reassemble it. Take your slide stop and the slide stop spring. Grab the spring by the 90 degree piece. Slide it on there so that the leg catches in a groove on the slide stop. Hold that in place with this finger and then it's really simple. I'm going to Drop that 90 degree down into the hole and then rotate everything up and then slide it back in and release it. Now you can see that spring is holding our trigger pin in place and our slide stop is operating properly. Go ahead. Okay, the uh, next thing we're going to do is put the sear, sear pin and sear spring back into the gun. Uh, this is one of the more uh, difficult uh, installation pieces so uh, take your time be patient uh, take your sear um, I normally try to bring it in from the right side grab the sear and then drop it down into the, the uh, it's where it needs to be here all right what we're going to do is we're coming in from the back and we're keeping the sear um, just the pin part in place and then I'm going to go ahead and get the pin put it in place and move it around until the pin starts. That's going to act as my guide. All right. So once I have that in there, I can just flip that sear back up so that it's in its proper location. And then the sear spring goes in like so. Okay. The, uh, the double portion, if you will, where the two spring legs are in beside each other. Those two springs are beside each other that should go into the frame. So we're going to drop it in place. All right. <clears throat> then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that two millimeter punch. I'm going to come in from the outside. And again, I put it in place so that I can push the sear spring down so that it lines up with the sear pin hole and then push that pin the rest of the way in. If you're having a hard time pushing that pin the rest of the way in, uh, what I recommend is hold that down, keep tension again with your slave pin or your punch, and then 
push it up against a bench or something you allow that uh, pressure to push it back in but in this case I pushed it all the way in I'm just going to take my punch on this side and push it until it's flush so now my sear is reinstalled now that I have the sear installed we're going to go ahead and drop in the hammer strut it goes in like this all right so just drop it into that there put the hammer in place Put the hammer pin back in with the large head of the pin on the left side of the gun. Um, and in, at this point, I'm going to go ahead and decock or drop the hammer down. I'm going to push down on the hammer drop lever in order to drop the hammer. So we're going to push this down and just lift the hammer up. This is the hammer drop lever right here. It's the hammer drop lever right here. Okay, now let's get our trigger bar back in the gun. Uh, trigger bar goes back in uh, just the way we took it out. Just go ahead and get it started and then you're going to either use that crochet hook that we talked about or if you don't have one you can use a uh, punch to do it. What we're going to have to do is reach in and lift that trigger return spring up and then push the leg and buff the trigger bar. Now, replacing, replacing the trigger bar spring. Basically, take the 90 degree leg, drop it down into that uh, rear hole, and then there's a groove in the front on the frame right here. Drop it down into there. So we've got the rear 90 degree leg in here, the curved part into the slot, and then just take your fingernail and pull it down and allow it to drop into the groove in the bottom of the trigger bar. At this point, the trigger should actually function and do everything that you need it to do. All right, so the last thing we need to do is hammer spring, hammer spring uh, cup, and the retaining pin there. So. Turn the gun upside down, make sure your hammer strut has, fall, has fallen down into the right spot in the gun. You're going to come down in with your hammer spring and make sure that hammer spring goes over the hammer strut. You want the hammer spring around the outside of the hammer strut. You want the polished part of the spring facing towards the hammer spring cup so that when it sits in here, that polished point portion will rotate when the spring compresses. Okay? Put your hammer spring cup in there or lanyard loop if you will. Grab your uh, dog-eared pin, push it down onto the bench, push the pin in place. You should be all set. At this point I'll do a little function check um, to make sure things are working properly but be careful not to start pulling the trigger and dropping the hammer onto the frame of the gun. Control it with your thumb because that hammer falling onto the aluminum frame right there can cause damage. So only do this when you're controlling the hammer. Alright, now before I put the grips back on the gun I'll go ahead and <clears throat> reinstall the slot. And I'll go ahead and do a quick function check, making sure the trigger is working properly. What I'm looking for is to make it sure that the gun is working properly in double action and in single action. Okay, on uh, so certain guns, uh, maybe five or ten percent, uh, you may run into some issues. This Wilson trigger bar uh, has an over travel stop on the front side, and it has uh, additional material on the DA notch so that it cocks the hammer a little bit farther. So a few guns will probably run into or could possibly run into an issue of the not being able to pull all the way through on the double action uh, trigger pull. Now if the gun is operating correctly in single action uh, and dropping the hammer fine in single action, that means I've probably got too much material on the DA hook. All right, so let's take a look at that. Okay, so we're going to take the trigger bar back out.
there's two places that are oversized. The front side of the trigger bar, this contacts the frame and reduces over travel. And the back side right here has additional material to cock the hammer in a little bit further. Uh, with a stone or a very sharp file, uh, you can take some material off the front side here to give you additional over travel. Uh, and the other thing you can do is remove some material from the DA notch on the trigger bar. Now to do that, uh, I would recommend using uh, a stone. And what you're going to do is you're going to come in and lay that trigger bar completely flat and you're going to remove material right off the top edge right here. But all we're going to do is take that stone and take that material off and try to be nice and square. You may need to go back and polish that corner, but again, this is only a handful of guns that will run into that issue. All right, there you go, guys. Uh, finished up the assembly there. Put the grips back on the gun. Make sure you do a good function check. Cycle the slide uh, very vigorously. Check to make sure that you're getting good contact and the gun is functioning correctly. Uh, we put it all back together, put the NRA weights on it, and we came out with about a six pound double action and just under a three and a half pound single action. Now this one's got a 12 pound chrome silicone Wilson combat spring in it, so it's pretty much a competition setup. So guys, good luck with the reassembly. If you run into any issues, reach out to us at LangmanTactical.com. Train hard, stay safe, and we'll see you next time.